Hello, class. Can you hear me? Yes. How are, How are you today? Of course you're good. What about you? It's hot, man. It's very hot today. Yep, that's right. I'm waiting for the rain. It's supposedly, according to our weather, it was supposed to rain today. Regarding with the forecast, we only have the 50% uh, of possibility to rain. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, man. Well, uh, here in, in Santa Tecla. Oh, okay. Hey, what happened to um in Santa Tecla? What happened to to Dawi's son? He he disappeared. The ex mayor. What happened with what? Roberto, I remember Roberto Dawi's son was a mayor in in Santa Tecla. Huh? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what happened with him. I believe that maybe he moved to uh, well he. Immigrate to another country. Yeah, I thought. I, I I think it's very smart because he totally disappeared. Yeah, that and that's the smartest thing you can do. Take whatever money you you stole, yeah, and just disappear and don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, I believe that because uh, since there since his uh, period as a mayor. Mm -hmm. I never see. I never saw any, any what. What do you call that? Any construction. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I, I don't. I don't saw any any construction that was made by the. And who? And and I remember that he was very active in in. As um opposition, <laughs> yeah. Since I remember, it, he lived in um what's the name? near to the U.S. embassy. Oh, okay. I remember he was he 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 made some very stupid comments. I remember that during the COVID. He said that that hospital was not necessary. It was more important to have CIFCO because that was that moved the economy. <laughs> and, and all you needed to do was wash your hands very well with with um with soap. Well, he he made some very very stupid comments. So, but I think there were he wasn't thinking. The consequences. Yeah. Hello, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez. Someday I will meet you. <laughs> as soon as I see you go in, I, I start talking to you. <laughs> Hi, Claudita, Marcela, how are you? Uh a little bit tired because now I had to go to the um, San Salvador. But wait, wait, where, where do you live? Cincinnati. Oh, yes, it's true. I thought, I, I yeah, I thought you lived in Lourdes. So you had to come to San Salvador. Why? <laughs> Business or pleasure? Business. Oh, really? Job interview? <laughs> No, it's try. I try to help my parents because uh, they are they're old. So I need to, I don't know, guide them. Oh, okay. Oh, in the bakery. Uh, no. No. Um, I try to guide them to the place that they want to go. Today. No, but uh, your parents, they have a bakery, no? No, no. Uh, my no. parents, uh, uh, my dad is an counter, maybe? Contador? Accountant. Accountant. Thank you. 
Oh, uh, okay. Okay. And did you come here driving or by bus? My bus. Yeah, and... you know, I think it's the best it's the best thing to do. It's impossible to drive here. Yeah. 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 I I would take the bus. I mean, I don't care if it takes 2 or 3 hours, but I'm sitting down and sleeping and not worrying. <laughs> But I prefer walking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that too. I, yeah, walking too. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. And what part of San Salvador did you come? Uh, mm, Ministerio de Hacienda? I don't know. I don't know how to say it in English. Internal affairs. Mm -hmm. And internal what? That's what it's internal affairs. Uh, internal affairs. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you don't come to San Salvador very often? No. No, no. Okay. Sometimes, maybe on Friday, I'm going to go to the Shiba Pet on Friday. Oh, you have gone to the Chivo Pet? Yeah, because uh, I have one cat who is sick and another uh, peluqueria, how to say in English. Oh, wait, wait, what, what's that called for? Grooming. Grooming, thank you. How does the Chivo Pet work? I mean, you do you make an appointment or you just go? Uh, I should make an appointment, but it's very difficult uh, doing that because it's always full. Okay. So what do you do? You just go? No, I make an appointment. Okay. Um, just that, but, but with, with my cat who is sick, I had to uh, type in on Twitter. Then they answer me. And maybe two weeks ago, they called me and I make an appointment in that way. Okay. Well, <laughs> two weeks, wow, it's more efficient than Seguro Social. <laughs> yeah. Seguro Social, they go, okay, so your next appointment, you are set for July 2nd, 2025. Is that okay with you? Yeah. You know, I have an appointment uh, February to the next year. And the Unidad de Salud. Do you know why that is? Why? Okay. One, number one, is because the Social Security doesn't want to pay very much. But number two, there are not enough specialists in the country. <clears throat> so, for example... And I'm telling you this because I, I have two of my brothers. They work in the Seguro Social. They're doctors. And they tell me like um, a heart doctor. The heart doctor, sometimes there are not many. And sometimes on Monday, they go to this Seguro. On Tuesday, they go to that one. Wednesday, they go to a different one because there's not enough. So there's a lot of patients with heart conditions, but not many doctors. And I mean, there are doctors, but they just don't want to work in Seguro Social because they make good money independently. So that's one reason. Yeah. All right, class. So today we're going to start a different task on TOEFL is the listening comprehension. So the first two weeks we did the reading comprehension. What did you think about the reading comprehension? Crazy, no? That's, it's a little bit hard because, because think, of the topics. I think it's very hard to be honest with you. Ah. Yes. There is I, a lot of new vocabulary also. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is what I'm telling you. Don't feel bad if you under, don't understand because even native speakers don't understand sometimes. Hey, I don't understand. I would have to read those stories like four or five times. But, and the time is running, right? Because they yes. I, 
you suppose they do not give you enough time to no i think i think well it depends i think they do give you enough time now mm. but one thing is very it's important like, if you get it mm. really three or four times to yeah. try to understand it yeah but one thing is very important remember a good tip is try to read the questions before you read the, the <clears throat> before you read the story because mm -hmm. then maybe when you're reading you find the answer mm -hmm. hey, hey this is it so that'll be one okay and today we're going to do the second part which is the listening comprehension me too I got, I'm sorry, I think I got disconnected. Can you You're hear me? You're breaking down your sound. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yes. It's better. Okay. Do I sound like an Android? Yep. Something like that. Oh, man. Then definitely my internet is down right now. Because I have the five barritas. <laughs> Maybe, oh, but you know what? I hear it's very windy outside. It's going to rain, maybe. Okay, so let me, so today, like I said, we're going to practice um, the listening. Is my audio better now? Yes, teacher. Okay, good. Thank you. <clears throat> and let's see. Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah. Do you yeah. see the you see the lady, right? Yes. No, actual actually we are what well, we see is your inbox, your email inbox. Okay, what about oh. now? Yeah, we see okay. the lady. Okay. Cool. Okay, now Another part of the TOEFL is the listening section. So if you think reading was complicated, also listening will be a little bit complicated. So this we will talk about the challenges about listening, the challenging of listening, about the listening sections, two types of listening questions, and listening practice. So let's hear the video. Teacher, the audio teacher lower sound slower. Sorry about that. An in section. What about now? Better. As in the reading, here you will find challenges about okay. listening. You see. Okay. How about a listening section? Two types of listening questions. Listening practice. So, listen, the challenges of listening. Do you understand that expression, the challenges of listening? Yes. What is challenges? 
desafíos, retos. Yes, good. Oh my God, look how I paused. She looks evil. The devil. Yeah, she looks like she's... A possession. Like, yeah, like a zombie outside your window. She's looking at you, ready to eat you. Challenges of listening. There you when go. listening, That's you true. must concentrate and focus your attention on the passage. You need to be familiar with the type of questions on the test. Read and listen carefully. Answer all the questions. You may take notes as you listen. Will it be time for taking notes? Talk. About mm. you, you need to take notes. <laughs> That, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you 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 should take a pencil and, and paper just in case. The listening section. The listening section on the TOEFL test measures your ability to understand spoken English. You will hear parts of a conversation or lectures lasting from three to five minutes. Each listening passage is followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. So, no prior knowledge is necessary. It's followed by five or six questions. Again, no prior knowledge is necessary. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay, now these questions are called guest content and guest purpose questions. Let's see what they are. Let's begin with guest content and guest purpose questions. Remember that the gist of something is the main point or key idea. Gist content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. Gist purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can okay, so ask you to identify what the main listening conversation is. So let's start good from the beginning. A guest content question, it asks you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. So maybe it's not like, for example, in the beginning, I was, um, we were talking about, we were talking about, um, what's his name? Uh, Dawison. And maybe it was a political conversation or not. I was talking with Jose Wilfredo. Hey, what happened with that one? He was the mayor of Santa Tecla, blah, 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 blah. So the, what was the guest content question? Is to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. So we were not talking about Santa Tecla. We were not talking about... Um, Arena, we we're not talking about FMLN, or we we're talking about Davison. Yes, that was actually the main topic of the conversation. Okay, so you understand what a guest content is? Yes. Okay, so the definition for guest content is guest content questions or asks you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. Okay. 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 I need you to answer me because I don't know if you're listening to me or not. 
So I need you to say yes or no because yes. I, I don't know if my internet is stable or not. Okay. So that is a guess question. Or lecture. Just purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You that can one, recognize just cause. I'm sorry, guess purpose question is very explanatory, the name. Asks you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. Excuse me, do you know the difference between asks you or questions you? Mm. Nope. No, teacher. Okay, um, I'm going to do an example, okay? But please know that this is an example. Uh, Jose, do you have a girlfriend? Jose Wilfredo? No, teacher. My wife is oh, going to put me. She... <laughs> yeah, I'm married. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Jose Saias, <laughs> you're single. You're single. I remember that. Are you still yes. single? Or you, or you went back yes. with your ex? No. With, with your with your I remember your your toxic ex-girlfriend, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so okay, so you are single. Claudia Marcela, are you single? Yeah. Okay. Now please, please, please understand this is an example. Okay, so play along. Jose Isaías. Okay. Hey, look, Claudia Marcela, she's single and she lives in Sonsonate, that's close to Cabañas, no? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, you, 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 you are from. Oh no, you're from La Palma, right? Yes, Chilet. Okay, so why don't you ask her for her phone number? Okay, now listen to this. I told them ask her. I didn't say question her. In Spanish, what is ask? Similar to request. Yes. Or try to find out. Yes. So many people get confused. Many people think that ask is preguntar, which it is, pero es más pedir. Okay. That's why people say ask for permission. Ask for, ask her her name. Ask her for her phone number. Okay, so in this, a guest purpose question asks. Y eso está mal dicho, porque es ask with an S. Asks you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why this is a student, or what is the main purpose? So the expression mainly about. Did you watch the movie? What is a very popular movie? Um, okay, did you watch Barbie? Did you watch the movie? Okay. Did you watch The Passion of the Christ? So you did? I think so. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, okay. What was the movie mainly about? Life. This is life. Mm -hmm. No. You see, that's where you're wrong. It wasn't about mainly about Jesus' life. It was mainly about the last 24 hours mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, this is a very good example because here you can confuse people. Because if you tell people, oh, the movie's about Jesus' life, mm -hmm. then people will go see it and expect to see it. You know, this is not about Jesus' life. This is the last day. Of Jesus. I mean, but I understand what you were trying to say, but no, it's, it was actually, it was mainly about 
um, the last, I don't know if it was the last three days or the last day, the last 24 hours. And part two is coming. Jesus reloaded. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dennis, since you like good movies, have you ever seen The Temptation of the Christ? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. The you, Temptation of the... Of the Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's called The Last Temptation of the Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I'm asking this because I know that you like... Um, I am always looking up for good movies. And this movie, sounds... yeah, this movie is um, it's a little, it's a little uh, well, it's not a little. You know Martin Scorsese, right? The yes. director. Okay, so imagine that he directed that movie. The movie did not go to the movies because many people got offended. Mm -hmm. It's. It's a very good movie. I recommend you to watch it. It's, it's, it now, seems that it's an Claro video, right? No, I don't know. You know who Jesus is? William Dafoe. Do you know William Dafoe? William Dafoe is, is the one that appears in Spider-Man. In Spider-Man, uh, yeah. Yeah. The crazy really man. good actor. Yes. Yeah. Now, that movie is mainly about Jesus' life. But, you know, many people got offended because, you know, he actually has sex with Maria Magdalene and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, he was a normal person in the movie, but it's a very good movie. I recommend you. So the reason why I mentioned that movie is because um, what happened with The Last Temptation, The Last Temptation of the Christ was mainly about the last 24 hours of Jesus. And I'm sorry, The Passion. And the last temptation of the Christ is a movie that is mainly about the life of Jesus. But really, you have to be very open-minded to watch that movie. If you are easily offended, then you will not like it. But it's a very good movie. Uh, Judith, no, can you Pontius Pilatus, uno de ellos era David Bowie. Why does the student or what is the main purpose? Here are two things to keep in mind when answering just content and just purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a just content question or a just purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the gist content or gist purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of gist content and gist purpose questions. I'm putting something on your chat right now. Do you see the chat? Yes. Yes. Okay. But the other kind, the other kind of, of question is content, and the other one is the purpose. Only this. Okay, here's the other one. So we have here's the two. The second one's the gist purpose question and the gist content. So let's see here. Let me move this. You hear the professor. Well, today. I had hoped to show some computer slides, but uh, this morning when I 
popped into the lab to set up the equipment, I discovered that um, the projector needs a bulb replacement. Needless to say, we didn't have a spare. So today you get to see my drawing skills or uh, shall I say lack, my lack of drawing skills instead of nice computer illustrations. So please bear with me. So you will hear in the exam, you will hear a voice, que dice esto? Why does the professor say this? So do you see this part where it says you hear? This is the audio is... You, you will be hearing. And then the question, why does the professor say this? O hay uno que creo que el acento es bien británico. Why does the professor say this? So why do you think? So please bear with me. You hear, so please bear with me. To joke with the class, to ask the class for their patience, to make excuses for the situation, to encourage students to make sketches. Why do you think he says this? So there'll be teacher. Yes, I would say that. I would say, yeah, um, to ask the class for their patience. <laughs> Thank you. You should choose B. <laughs> <laughs> you should choose B. The professor cannot show the computer illustrations and therefore he has to draw the illustration. He would like the students to be understanding about the situation. All right. So that was easy. Detailed question. What do you think is a detailed question, class? Now let's talk about detail questions. Detail questions ask you about information that is stated in a small part of the passage. They generally focus on the who, what, when, where, and why. Those are called the famous five W's. Yep. Yes. Detailed questions usually take one of these formats. According to the paragraph X, occurred because, according to paragraph X, which is true of, the author's description of, mentions which of the following. There are two major traps that people fall into on detailed questions. Both of them can be avoided if you're careful not to choose an answer simply because it contains keywords from the passage. The first trap is to choose a true statement that was contained in the passage, but that doesn't answer the question. The second mistake people make is to accidentally choose an answer that contains a lot of words from the passage, but actually it states a different idea or changes the relationships between things. For example, Sleeping makes me happy is very different from happiness makes me sleep. Let's work on a sample question. Listen to the audio program about a conversation and try to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I will start again. So, number one, this is how the exam will sound. This is how the, the voice notes will sound. Okay. So number two, let's read the question. So let's hear the answer. What is the man doing when he says this? So what do we have to pay attention? Let's listen to the man when he says what he's doing. And then boom, that's the answer. So you should look at the answers. He's showing a woman his excitement. 
he's telling the woman that he thinks she's testing him. He's letting the woman know that he considers what she said to be untrue. He's asking for a confirmation about his understanding of what the woman said. Okay, so we under so immediately we know that he's talking to a woman. And he's having a conversation and nos da por. I don't know. I think something the, the adjective would be suspicious. Because look, he's telling the woman that he thinks she is testing him. He is letting the woman know that he considers what she says to be untrue. He's asking for confirmation about understanding what the woman said. So obviously they're not having a friendly chat. Okay, so let's listen. Class, who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not off Six course because I just from about a conversation and tried to get the right answer. I dropped my physics course because I discovered it didn't meet my degree requirements. You wouldn't know anyone in the class who'd like to buy the course book, would you? Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? Well, yeah, if it's within a reasonable period of time. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Not offhand, but if you bought it new and kept the receipt, I'm sure you could get your money back or exchange it for one you do need. Really? I could do that, could I? What is the man doing when he says this? Really? I could do that, could I? What do you think he's doing? Letter D. He's, He's asking. asking for a confirmation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, letter D, letter A also, because he's showing excitement, really, in the expression, right? So, uh, yeah, but may, maybe it would be letter D, because he did ask for a confirmation. Were you able to get it? That's right. By him using a talk question at the very end, we understand he's confirming his understanding about what the woman told him. Therefore, choice D is correct. Okay, this was a little tricky because normally I would be confused between A and B. Because if you heard the expression, really? It tiene la palabra, excitement. He's, wait, ah. He's showing, wait, he's showing the woman his excitement on getting that information. Immediately, I would say, oh, okay, it's A. But then he's making for confirmation about his understanding of what the woman said. So this is more accurate. All right, next it says, guess content and guess purpose questions. Instructions, listen to part of the lecture from a history class. Listen to part of a lecture from a history class. William Cody. I'm sorry, did you read the question already? Yeah. What is the talk mainly about? Well, you probably know him as Buffalo Bill. Okay, so William Cody became an American showman and founded the Great Wild West Show. That was in 1883. He traveled around Europe with other famous people that you probably have also heard of, like people such as the sharpshooter Annie Oakley and the Indian chief Sitting Bull. This Wild West show traveled, as I said, around Europe and performed for many heads of state like the Queen of England, Queen Victoria, the show was featured at her Golden Jubilee celebrations, and the Tsar of Russia, 
That would have been the Tsar uh, Alexander III. His father, Alexander II, had been assassinated in 1881, so Alexander III would have seen Cody's show. 4. What is the talk mainly about? This is easy, right? Yeah. There's C. Does anyone think it's something different from C? Nope. All right. Let's do this one now. What does the speaker mainly discuss? The turn of the century, ragtime in America, band concerts in America and you in Europe, early American musical forms. So we're going to hear, what do you think he's going to talk about? Music and in history, in America and Europe. So what does the speaker mainly discuss? Let's see. Listen to part of a lecture from a music class. Just before the turn of the 20th century, a new musical form captivated America, and that was ragtime. I suspect you've all heard of ragtime. The main feature of ragtime is its syncopation. Syncopation. You know how a waltz has a beat of one, two, three, one, two, three, and a polka has one, two, three, four. These beats are regular, but in ragtime there's syncopation, a displaced beat or accent. Traditional strong beats become weak and vice versa, weak becomes strong. Or the beat isn't evenly spaced, but comes a little earlier than expected, or later. Although ragtime had its start in 1897 with William Krell's Mississippi Rag, and I'm going to be playing that for you in a moment, it was Scott Joplin who popularized the rag with his maple leaf rag. We'll hear that one as well. Now, it was John Philip Sousa, best known for marches, actually, who began to feature rags in his band concerts in America and Europe. And by the early 1900s, ragtime was the most popular musical art form in America. Okay? Now let's listen to... I'd like to play a few of these pieces I've been telling you about. Seven. What does the speaker mainly discuss? I think this one's very Letter easy B. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let her be. Yeah, ragtime in America. Now, so what do you think ragtime is? Is it, is it a song, a band, or what? Like a form of music? Genero like sería genre. No, it's genre. Their music. Genero in English is called gender is only for people. Mm -hmm. oh. Or living living creature. So in this is like for movies and, and music is called genre. Genre. How do you spell that? Uh, Henry, I think. I think that's how it would be in Spanish. G E N R E. Oh. Got it. So, what genre of music do you like? Oh, I like uh, alternative rock and indie rock. Next, it says, listen to the passages. You will hear the part of the passage repeated. Choose the answer that identifies the speaker's purpose. So, why does the professor say this? You need to download that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? You will need to, will need to download the, the three are together on a... On a five. Try to play. Uh -huh. You need to download it. Okay, yeah.
I started yesterday with this, and when I saw the rest of them, my God, <laughs> that lot of them. <laughs> you need to, to click on the arrow. Exercise. And then open in the right. The speaker. Oh, no, I got it. I, I... So, does competition. Can you hear? Competition promotes yeah, success. You can hear? Yes, yes, we can hear. Okay. Exercise L22. Identifying the speaker's purpose. One. So, does competition promote success? Think about it. Does competition promote success? Well, uh, doesn't that depend on what you consider, uh, how you define success? So, if you define success as beating your rival, then yes. But if you define success as finding satisfaction in relationships, possibly, very possibly, competition is detrimental to success. Why does the professor say this? Think about it. To find out if the students can think critically. Okay. Letter D. So once again, let's let's hear the instructions. Listen to the passages. You will hear then. Yes, letter D. Okay, you will hear. You, you, I'm sorry. You will then hear part of the passage repeated. Mm -hmm. Choose the answers that identifies the purpose. Okay. So A, to find out if the students can think critically. I think that's a good option. To locate the comp the competitive competitive students in class to encourage students to oppose the premise of the question. That's another interesting. To get students to consider the question more deeply. Yeah. You, you think, yeah, I, I would I would vote for D because he did repeat the question. Mm -hmm. And usually psychologically when you repeat the question to the same person is like, you really want that person to think about it. Remember when you had a girlfriend and she was breaking up with you? You said, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you really, really sure? <laughs> you know, so you, you were asking for confirmation. Okay. Two. In looking at the teeth of skeletons from the uh, Mesolithic period, it was found that those from Northern Europe had fewer cavities than those from Southern Europe. Why? Simple. Diet. The breakdown of non-carbohydrate foods like meats and fish doesn't form acidic byproducts, whereas carbohydrates are karyogenic. Uh, you know, caries, cavities, in other words, causing tooth decay. Carbohydrates, especially the sugars, are karyogenic. They produce acids that destroy teeth. Why does the professor say this? You know, caries, cavities. In other words, causing tooth decay. So what do you think this is? To define a world that might be unfamiliar? To explain yeah. the effects of acid byproducts, to contrast two different dietary habits, to illustrate uh, to illustrate the dangers of eating carbohydrates. The part that was repeated is for letter A. Letter A. Letter A. Yeah, I don't really like that answer, but. I I would go more for D, but okay. Let's see the next one.
Three. Think about how you prepare for your courses. You read the textbook, take notes during your lectures. You try to learn the concepts. Then you take a test, one that supposedly shows that you've gained that knowledge. But if you get the answer wrong, does that mean you're wrong? Well, yes. If I get the answer wrong, then I didn't know the concept or didn't understand it, right? I, I suppose I could have misread the question. It might mean the question was badly written. It could be any of those things, but I want you to look at this in a different way. When we study the way children gain language, we see certain steps, some of which appear as if the child is regressing in language acquisition instead of progressing. Let me give you an example. When a child has acquired a certain amount of language, she uses the form "I went" correctly. But later in her language development, she starts using the ungrammatical form "I goed," a word that doesn't exist in English. The child has probably never heard anyone say that. This, by the way, can be very unsettling for parents. But after a while, the child goes back to using the correct form. Now, this is a natural progression in child language acquisition. So, with this in mind, think about a test you didn't do well on. Now, the incorrect answers you chose were they an indication of where you were in the process of understanding particular concepts? In other words, maybe they were correct in terms of the stage of your learning. Does that mean, Doctor Blake, that when I fail your final, I'll get a pass? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Tom. Why does the professor say this? But I want you to look at this in a different way. So, is it to direct direct the students and how to do well in exams? To explain why the students, then, pues, insisto que tiene de, de, ¿cómo es? dyslexia, the person who did this test. So, to explain why the students, to his questions are wrong. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. To explain why the students to his questions are wrong. To convince students not to upset if they fail a test. To direct the students to consider another interpretation. What do you think this is? Does it be? I think it's D. Better D. Yes, it makes sense. Letter letter D, right? Yep. Okay, let's do the last one. Four. Well, we've been rock climbing together now on several occasions, and I think everyone has made excellent progress. So, with that in mind, I thought you might be interested in a special climbing workshop at the State Park Climbing Center. The thing that really strikes me is the people who will be leading the workshop. Jim Brown, for example, you know, one of the most experienced rock climbers in the world today. I hope that you'll be able to arrange to attend. I'm sure that participants in the course will gain a great deal of confidence and refine their techniques. So, here are the details. The group's size will be limited, so everyone will be given lots of personal attention. The cost for the weekend, including accommodations and food, is $300. There will also be an extra, but small, a small charge for equipment for those participants who don't have their own gear. And, um, a $30 non-refundable deposit is required by the end of next week. With the balance, the balance should be paid by July 20th. I do urge everyone here to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. So, if you can register, I'll be handing out application forms after our climb this morning. Return the form and the deposit to my office as soon as possible. Why does the professor say this? The thing that really strikes me is the people who will be leading the workshop.
So why do you think that is? To explain why she will be attending the workshop? To show her acquaintance with professional climbers? See, neither be. To give her approval of the rock climbing workshop leaders? To convince students that they should pay as soon as possible? I see neither be. B. Here, C. We have B and C. Let's see. Yes, it was C. D, A. Okay, we got them all right. Hey, so maybe the listening is easier. <laughs> than the reading. Yes? OK, mm -hmm. class, then uh, we'll continue with more listening exercises tomorrow, OK? Good job today. OK, teacher, bye-bye. OK. Thank you. It's okay. raining here in San Salvador now, finally. Mm -hmm. OK. Bye, everybody. Good yes, night. I'll see bye. you. Have good a night. good Have a good night. Bye-bye. Take care. By Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales, if you exist. <laughs>